And uh, strong interaction uh, is, uh, I guess I'm not really ready to get into it, so let's not. Uh, in, in lieu of going into strong interaction and color charge and all that stuff, let me just talk about the hadrons, all the Jew of particles that we mentioned before. They are um, in this um, uh, chart of particle, the, in this chart of uh, um, standard model also, pi ions, that was the original Yukawa's meson. So originally, we thought of nuclear, in, nuclear force as being mediated by pi ion. And that's uh, not you know, entirely crazy model, but it's, uh, that's not the elementary interaction. The elementary interaction is mediated by gluons. Um, so anyway, so pi ion, K meson. Um, I guess we haven't talked about rho. I'm not quite sure what rho is supposed to be. Um, I mentioned the eta. I don't remember mentioning rho. Um, rho is probably similar to eta. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know why it's in this list. One thing I guess it's different, it's a spin one. So you can kind of look at it this way maybe. You, when you look at pi on and rho, they are very similar, right? They are both, uh, um, they both have the same quark content. So they have the same charge. Quark content determines what electric charge they can have. But they have two key differences. Rho is heavier, and it has a different spin. It's spin one instead of spin zero. So it's a sort of question of what gives. And um, let's see. And this was the, um, this was the, original evidence for what, not, what we now call color charge. It actually brings us back to something that you will be tested on exam three, power exclusion principle. Where does power exclusion principle come from? Exchange symmetry. Exchange symmetry, right? So um, for example, when you look at, so I already said up and down are kind of similar to each other. So let's treat these two as um, indistinguishable particles for now. So pi ion is um, a particle made up of two indistinguishable particles. Especially if I'm dealing with a neutral pi ion, that's actually true. Here, you kind of imagine that it's true. Then um, when you exchange these two particles, the wave function you get has to be anti-symmetric, which means they kind of have to be in a what's called a spin single led configuration. Because, okay, so I can't test you on this because when we did this in the lab, I told you I won't test you on it, so I won't test you on this. But in the lab, what you saw was when you have a combination of spin up and spin down, two spin half particles that are combined in this way. Um, so this is particle one, two, one, two. When they're combined in this way, uh, this is what's uh, known as triplet configuration. And the reason it's called a triplet is because this is a spin one state, as you saw in the lab. But I won't test you on this on the exam because I can't. Um, bec once it's a spin one, then it has a three different projections. One, zero, minus one. That's why it's called a triplet. This is a symmetric configuration. The anti-symmetry configuration is given by um, this one that um, you guys guessed that in the lab. So the same state, instead of plus, it's minus, and then down and up. So this is known as the single lead configuration because it's a spin zero combination. So zero spin, there's no projection, there is really only one state. So that's why pi meson is in spin zero state and it all makes sense. Which means, um, what's up with this? <laughs> what's up with the rho meson? I mean, it's a, everything is the same. Are we suddenly saying that, you know, spin statistics theorem is invalid, that fermions can be in symmetric configuration instead of anti-symmetric configuration? Um, so, Whenever you come across this kind of crossroad in, I guess, fundamental science, you usually have two options. One is that whatever rule or law that you believed in before is wrong. Maybe there's something wrong with the spin, stat spin statistics theorem. 
which means there's something wrong with the quantum field theory and <laughs> that's just invalid. That's one option. And the other option is there is something you miss. There's a particle, there's a parameter that you didn't know about before. And I will tell you every time this decision has come so far, um, the correct answer has been there's something we missed. This was true with the neutrino because the option there was, well, maybe energy conservation is wrong, but the option that we missed the particle turned out to be correct. And in this case, the other, um, it turns out the correct choice was that we missed something, and that's the quantum number that's associated with the color charge. So, um, yeah, with the color charge. So with the, this additional quantum number, so overall, even all the symmetry, it's a multiplicative symmetry. So, um, so up to what you are seeing here, up to spin that you see here, this is in a symmetric configuration but you can put the color charge in such a way that this is in a um, anti-symmetric configuration with respect to color charge. So you have an additional degree of freedom. Then everything, spin statistics theorem is fine. And this is still in an anti-symmetric overall uh, configuration. Um, so I, maybe that's why this is listed there. Anyway, so there's that meson. Um, so uh, I guess uh, we haven't talked about any of these, but these are some of the mesons dealing with the bottom and the charm quark. And there's a meson dealing with, oh, I guess actually that's it. There are no known mesons that have a, 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 the top quark in it. Top quark is so heavy and unstable that we don't know of any bound states involving top quark. Um, all right, so those are the mesons. Once again, the top two are what you have seen and you may be tested on, but I'm not gonna test you on the rest of them because there's just so many and the focus on physics is never memorization. That's why you get only one index card. Um, these are baryons and there's a very nice distinction between baryons and mesons. And this is kind of why baryon number is conserved, meson number is not. There's no such thing as meson number con conservation. And when you go back and look at the meson, you can kind of see why. It has a quark and anti-quark. So when you look at the net number of quarks, mesons will always have net zero quark. So that's why meson number is not conserved. You can produce a pion out of vacuum. I mean, you still need a charge. So you can produce a neutral pion out of vacuum just with the photons. Um, Baryons are made up of quarks, no anti-quark, or uh, they are made up of net quark. <laughs> so if it's anything like this, any anti-quark that's there is paired up, paired up with a quark, so it's a net three quarks. So that's the proton that you know are, and are familiar with. There's the neutron. Now you can produce anti-baryons. Um, they have anti-quarks in it three anti-quarks and everything is reversed except for the mass and I guess spin. Um, I, you can't really reverse spin, this is magnitude. Um, let's see, um, yeah, so every time you see a baryon, you can kind of imagine, oh, uh, with the right uh, process, you can produce the antiparticle version of it. But to tell you the truth, antibaryons are hard to produce. I know they have produced the antiproton and people have trapped anti-hydrogen. So you, know, you produce anti-hydrogen by combining anti-proton with the positron. And um, I don't know if they've actually produced anti-neutron. I thought as, as high up as anti-helium was produced, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, anyways, um, so these are some of the baryons that you have seen. You have seen the lambda baryon, one strange quark. And uh, we talked about the omega baryon. That's a sort of the beginning of the quark model because the, it, the quark model comes from the success of, oh, I learned how to pronounce his name, um, <laughs> Gell-Mann. <laughs> success of Gell-Mann in predicting existence of this particle and how to produce it. That's really the beginning of the quark model. So, um, so these are the baryons. Um, so uh, I don't know what else to say about them. Mm. Um, a proton is the lightest baryon, that's why it's a stable. Um, I guess um, that's everything.